So we're going to continue with the 12th chapter of Summer of the Monkeys. Jay Barry and his grandfather have just been to the mercantile to get coconuts to trap the monkeys with. Jay Barry met a girl, was very embarrassed by it. He also bought ribbons for Daisy, a thimble for his mother, a shaving mug for his dad, and a bag of jawbreakers. Now, remember I've told you that I was in the fourth grade when I read this, and candy was a big deal back then. And just hearing about those jawbreakers made me remember that we, and I have no idea what the state of candy is in 2017, but you used to be able to get a jawbreaker that was as big as the palm of your hand. It would take you forever to get through it. It began white with multicolored colored dots on top, and as you licked it, it would change color, and you usually had to put it in cellophane and set it on your desk at school. Um, I'd be curious in the comments if anybody else remembers jawbreakers like that, if they still exist. These these jawbreakers they're talking about were small enough for Rowdy the dog to swallow quickly, which Jay Barry thought was very funny. So we left Jay Barry and his grandfather by a stream getting water, and we'll pick up there. That's not a bad idea, Grandpa said. Who knows, maybe a hundred years from now another old man and a boy will stop here and have a good cool drink from Jay Barry's spring. You can't ever tell. Might even be a highway come by here. Aw, oh, Grandpa, I said nothing like that will ever happen to me. I'd be lucky if I had a grasshopper named after me. Grandpa chuckled and said, That's not a bad idea either. If you could find a purple grasshopper and hang a name on it like J. Barry's Hopper, it might stick. You can't ever tell. I laughed and said, Grandpa, we sure have a lot of fun together, don't we? Grandpa smiled and said, We surely do. You know, an old man like me can teach a young boy like you all the good things in life. But it takes a young boy like you to teach an old man like me to appreciate all the good things in life. I guess that's what, li that's what life's all about. I didn't quite understand what Grandpa was talking about, but it sounded pretty good to me anyway. Just then, Grandpa's mares started snorting and stomping their hooves. We could hear their trace chains jingling. Grandpa cocked his ear and said, It sounds like something has scared my mares. Probably an old hog or a deer, I said. The bottoms are full of them. We could have spooked the one, one of them up when we came to the spring. And it ran by the team and scared them. The mares quieted down. As Grandpa got to his feet, he said, I guess that's what it was. It sounds like everything is all right now, though. Let's have one more drink of this spring water, and then we better be going. It's, it's getting along in the day. When Grandpa and I got back to the buckboard, I said, Grandpa, look at Rowdy. Something's been prowling around here. Rowdy was sniffing around the buckboard. He was walking stiff leg with every hair on his back standing straight up. Watching Rowdy, Grandpa said, It sure looks that way. I wonder what it was. I don't know, I said, but whatever it is, Rowdy didn't like the smell of it at all. Grandpa stepped over to the buckboard, looked in it, and in a loud voice he said, Hey, our coconuts are gone. The basket is empty. Gone, I said. As I hurried over and looked into the basket, by golly, they are gone, but there's something else in the basket. <clears throat> Grandpa grunted as he reached down in the basket. He lifted out the dirtiest, most ragged pair of breeches I had ever seen in my life. Holding them in front of him, Grandpa said, I could be wrong, but this looks like a pair of breeches to me. I would never have recognized the breeches if I hadn't seen a patch on the seat of the pants. Suffering bullfrogs, Grandpa said. Those are my breeches. They're the ones I lost the day those monkeys got me drunk. I recognized that patch on them. Mama sewed it on. Grandpa tossed the breeches into the underbrush. Whew, he said, wrinkling his nose. By the way they smell, those monkeys must have been taking turn about wearing them. I wouldn't doubt it, Grandpa I said. Those monkeys are liable to do anything. Looking into the basket, Grandpa said, It looks like we have something here. He reached in and lifted out a wet, soggy, nasty-looking gunny sack. I could hear a jingling of metal when he picked it up. Wide-eyed, he said, wide-eyed, I said, Holy smokes, Grandpa, that's my gunny sack and traps. I didn't think I'd ever see them again. Dropping the gunny sack and the buckboard, Grandpa reached in the basket and, again and said, Well, what do you know? He lifted out my bean shooter. That's my bean shooter, Grandpa, I said, all excited. I lost it the day I shot that hundred-dollar monkey in the belly. Grandpa started looking in the underbrush. He said, Something's going on. I think somebody is playing a trick on us. I bet it's your dad. I don't think it's Papa, Grandpa, I said, as I looked up into the trees. I think I know who did this. It's those monkeys. That's who did it. No, Grandpa said. Monkeys couldn't do anything like that. 
I still think your dad is playing a trick on us. Just then I saw a sight that took me several seconds to figure out what I was seeing. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even swallow. I couldn't do anything but stand there with my mouth open and stare. I had seen a lot of sycamore trees in my life, but I had never seen one as beautiful as the one I was looking at. Strung from limb to limb all through the top tree were the pink and blue ribbons I had gotten for Daisy. Sitting on limbs here and there were the monkeys, each one of them that I could see was holding a coconut in its paws. They were just sitting there looking at Grandpa and me with no expression at all on their cute little faces. A gentle breeze was stirring the top of the big sycamore. The ribbons were waving and fluttering. Brilliant flashes of pink and blue gleamed and shimmered in the sun's bright rays. It was an unbelievably beautiful sight. As if from far away I heard Grandpa say, What's the matter? Do you see something? Look, Grandpa, I cried, pointing at the sycamore. Look at that. I bet you've never seen anything that pretty. Grandpa looked where I was pointing. I saw him reach and take hold of the buckboard with one hand as if he were steadying himself. He looked down at the ground, shook his head, and looked again at the sycamore. He shook off his hat and scratched the top of his bald head. He cleared his throat and said, What in the name of heaven is that? It's those monkeys, Grandpa, I said. They didn't only steal our coconuts, they stole Daisy's ribbons too. They decorated the sycamore tree with them. Isn't it pretty? Grandpa never said a word. He just grunted and kept staring at the beautiful sycamore tree. Just then, Jimbo walked out onto a big limb. He was carrying a coconut in one of his paws. Grandpa threw, threw his head back and said, What in the world is that thing? Grandpa, I said, I've been wait You've been wanting to see that hundred-dollar monkey. Well, you're looking at him. That's Jimbo. Grandpa said, Why, that's no monkey. It's too big to be a monkey. It looks more like an ape to me. I don't care what he looks like, Grandpa, I said. That's Jimbo, and he's the smartest thing you've ever seen in your life. Jimbo must have realized we were talking about him, and he decided to show off a little. Waving the coconut in the air, he started hopping up and down on the limb and uttering those deep grunts. In a surprised voice, Grandpa said, What's that monkey doing now? He's talking to you, Grandpa, I said. That's monkey talk. I saw when Rowdy took off down the road with his tail between his legs. Rowdy, I yelled. You come back here. Rowdy acted like he hadn't even heard me. He just put on a little more speed and disappeared around a bend in the road. Where's the hound going, Grandpa asked. He's going home, Grandpa said. He's afraid those monkeys might get a hold of him. Jimbo had seen.